In this video, you will learn about reorgs, what they are, what you should do to prepare, and what you can do to make sure they go as well as possible. That's coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome to HR Shop Talk, where you will get some expert insight into HR. I'm your host, Andrea Adams. I encourage you to subscribe to our show by clicking on the button at the bottom of the screen to continue learning from those who have in-depth HR experience. Today, my guest is Don Adams, who has years of HR experience as a manager and consultant. And as I disclosed in the other episode we did together, the last name isn't an accident. Hi, Dad. Hi. Well, let's get going and let's start off with a basic question. What is a reorg? The answer to that question, we have to step back and say, well, why does the organization exist? The organization exists because of its supplying services or information or other things of value to customers and others uh, that are benefit from what this organization does. Having said all of that, uh, the, the reason for reorganizations will be one of two things, uh, dealing with internal efficiencies or uh, more likely how to meet the needs of the clients, customers, the stakeholders of the organization. And if there's any other reasons for reorganizing, that should be thought through a little bit more because it's hard to justify the expense and the, and the time and effort that goes into a reorganization. It can be very substantial. When you talk about potential other reasons for a reorg that should be thought through very carefully, what are you thinking about? Uh, sometimes you get to senior management and for whatever reason, they think that they should reorganize without really thinking through why are we doing this? the expected outcomes and what are the benefits and, and what are the risks or the costs associated with this reorganization. The amount of effort required should not be underestimated. So can you talk about some good reasons for a reorg? The uh, reasons for a reorganization really, for the most part, should be driven by our relationships we have with stakeholders, whether they uh, be competitors or customers the expectations of pressure groups, such as environmentalists or uh, First Nations, just use a few examples. That's the audience. That's why we exist. Reorganization should be really driven by how can we do this better, better services, more services, less of something we're doing at the present time. So uh, then what are some key elements of a successful reorg? Well, first of all, it'll vary a little bit in terms of whether it's internal or external, but in general terms, what is going to be required is, first of all, there has to be a clear reason why we're doing this. That's going to be the kind of the barometer in terms of, of what we're doing and, and how much of it we're going to do. There needs to be a really clear plan by step. Uh, the communication part, I can't underestimate the amount of communication at, within the organization, but also externally. There's been some really interesting and admittedly not very many organizations when they were considering reorganizing, they got their customers involved. Those can be some really, really interesting and productive and can be frustrating initiatives, but it's another way of making sure that we're doing the, the best that we can for the organization to the people or stakeholders that, w that we have got. Communication internally is really important because it's going to be the employees that are going to implement this. And it's really important that they understand what we're doing, how we're going about doing it, and the outcomes. It's important that they buy into it. Many reorganizations have stumbled on the fact that the employees did not cooperate and uh, the results weren't there and could have been quite unproductive. <laughs> we, need to, we need to have a budget. It costs money. Also, the, if you've got high re potential rate of return on making certain changes, we should be applying our best human resources to those opportunities. So that's important. And it's really important, to, again, that there are outcome measures, like what is this going to look like at the end of the day? And it's not always in dollars and cents. It can be in efficiencies or it can be there are other kind of things, like if there's a high public relations component to it, how are we going to actually measure that to make sure that that's being achieved? So what has gone off the rails when 
people aren't buying in. It's either the uh, initiative itself is at fault or it's been poorly communicated. If people don't understand the reasons why the change is occurring and or they're afraid that something is going to negatively impact on them, human nature is to resist the change. If you find value in this video, hit the like button. And my question for you is, what have you found to be important in a successful reorg? Let us know in the comment section below. And continuing on with Don Adams. So what should HR be doing before, during, and after a reorg? I think uh, foremost uh, at the outset, HR needs to be integrally involved in the conception and Discussion, all the discussions involved for the reorganization. So much of it deals with human resources internally and possibly externally. If HR is not involved at that stage, then they're likely to be excluded in a number of critical decisions and critical changes that are about to be made. And that's when you can get into some very significant resistance to change issues. So that's before. What about during and after? Well, again, ongoing communication. It's been interesting with the COVID situation, at least in British Columbia, we fortunately had a doctor that was leading the charge every day, every day, days and weeks on end. She never took a day off and it was always communicating with the public. You know, now we're into another phase here that uh, is, I guess, not totally unexpected, but uh, we're running into uh, significant problems. But the initial few months it was really well managed with communication was critical and HR can provide that kind of background and to identify problem areas. The organizations, there's often there's people that are fallout from these things. They, they, they don't fit into the new framework and HR has got to be able to flag that and uh, have a plan for dealing with those situations. But they can't be halfway through HR gets involved to do damage control in regards to dealing with the human resource side of it training and development of people in, in some organizations we have to find new people with different sets of skills and HR is, needs to be involved in that process as well and just be uh, available to employees at any time of the day or night to answer questions that people will have because we don't need to have a whole bunch of insecurity in an organization if we can have some effective communications. So what advice could you give to a junior person who's not involved in the strategic planning? When I hear that is maybe it's a little bit too late. I'd like to just go back and start uh, what a junior HR person needs to be doing right from the outset when they start with, with an organization. First of all, hopefully you're working for a manager who wants to see your development accelerated, to have challenges, have opportunities to get involved in many things within the organization that even at a fairly senior level and, and providing good coaching so that you've got a set of skills and something to offer. And so if a person starts fairly junior, depending on the industry and, and uh, or the organization, like if it's manufacturing or mining or uh, some kind of an industrial operation, I've always found it helpful for when I'm dealing with people that one of the first things they do is they go out and work in the plant for maybe a month or so and get some real world experiences listening to real people who are doing work and they develop credibility in the organization. Taking on extra work that they normally would not be doing is uh, I think really important. Getting involved in projects even at a supportive level with senior managers and forming and developing uh, relationships with the with the senior people in the organization, but uh, trying to add value in terms of the work that they're doing and the visibility in the organization. And so they've got a foundation to build on, but unfortunately, junior people sometimes get buttonholed into doing administrative tasks and they forget out of their offices, and that's quite detrimental to the longer term uh, career path for many of these people. So the last question I have for you how could someone in an admin function prepare themselves to take on more responsibility during a reorg? I think if a person uh, exercises interest in the organization, learning about what it does, the problems that it has, the challenges that exist, and what it does well and what it doesn't do well, and really be inquisitive and learning about what the organization is all about, and doing a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. and be really, really positive and take on extra work, burn some midnight oil so that they can add value. 
that goes a long way to developing credibility and opening doors. Well, I think that's all the time we have. So uh, reorgs are often part of HR's work. Something you might also be wondering about is change management, which is an aspect of reorgs. An episode on that is coming, and I'll add a link when it's ready. Thanks for listening and see you next time.